What's up, squirrel? A little noisy on the metal roof. Hey? Oh, you're in the soffit. <laughs> little shitties running around in the frickin' attic. That's why it sounds noisier than hell up there. Hmm. I'll bet somebody's gonna get him one day. Get him. Get him. Get him. <laughs> get that squirrel. Hear that thing running around up in the soffit. Get him. Probably driving that dog nuts all year. <laughs> Get him. This weather sucks. The cold weather's good with the snow on the ground. I like it. Then, uh, you know, it really falls dry, green still, different colors and leaves a good time, but this time of year up in the north sucks. It's like that transition between winter and spring and the ground is just disgusting. The, the dirt up here, you step in with your boot, it sticks to you like glue and you instantly have like 10 pounds of mud stuck to your boot. So you imagine what comes off your wheels, right? And you're trucking to drive down the road. It's absolutely brutal. But anyway, I think I got a lengthy share here. I have a feeling it's going to be very interesting, especially because it's titled Offering Answers to Your Questions, and that's what I'm about for me. And I know a lot of you are too. So here we go. Let's see what this man has to say. Hello, Steve. My name is Gunter. I grew up hunting with my father in the Alps. But that's not why I'm writing to you. I'd like to provide some answers here that I've heard you and the others ask to share openly with the people. I'll try to keep this somewhat short to avoid writing a few hundred, a few hundreds of pages. You recently asked why Sabe warns people, why they don't just let us walk into a trap. People are not aware of what actually exists around us. That's usually why we don't understand yet. For example, every living thing here has a path of development, Sabe included, meaning. They're always beings like us and them, further along that path, but not in a physical form anymore, but in an, in an etheric body. With that less physical form, beings become a lot more capable in many ways. In a nutshell, Sabe are being watched and guided by beings who once were like them, but evolved. And by the way, that's the real evolution happening everywhere, not just on this world. That's a natural process, but it's not random at all. It's happening by design. A very big design. We, inside these bodies here, we all evolve over a long time until we are ready to exist in a less restricted form. We call this flesh and blood here a safeguard. It restricts our abilities, but it also restricts the things we can do wrong and the consequences thereof. Back to the point. There are laws and an order at work everywhere around us. You know yourself that mankind has lost almost all access to earlier knowledge about these things. Sabi can't just do whatever they like. If they cross specific lines, they will be stopped by most powerful means. Way more powerful than guns or the muscles of an eight-foot Sabe. So, they have to follow the rules they were given. That's why, usually, a Sabe will warn you, even with consequences, to adhere to that law. If you ignore the warning, then it's basically up to that Sabe, if he's evolved enough inside, to be decent about your, our ignorance, or if he's just waiting for that, to make you pay, because he actually hates humans due to, example, bad experiences and other reasons. Even the rogue Sabe knows these laws quite well. If a rogue Sabe crosses lines that are too big, he will be stopped immediately, before even doing anything, and he might lose his life without anyone seeing it. They know that. You won't find his body either. So, Rogue Sabe will, example, try to find a way to make you cross the lines to give him the right to annihilate you. The rogues are not all the same, as you know. Some eat humans. Some do other very nasty stuff. Some 
even are not so bad, but don't want you to follow the rules of their family and thus leave their clan. And that line, some people are just crossing by having the intention of killing him or harming him. And whether that's enough to get the watchers to stop him or not, you'll see quickly with the result. Sabi is just one of many forms that offers refuge to certain groups of being slash people. Example, some people deteriorate in a bad but very specific way where they hate being around other people. I don't mean just the bad ones, but anyone. And when someone gets too extreme in that direction, they might be offered to be born as Sabe, surrounded only by a very few of their family, to give them a better chance to find their inner peace again. Nature has a very calming effect, as we know. It's of course not as simple as I read here. That's why some Sabe might tell you that they once were like you. The Sabe form was created, not by some random evolution. Just as any other form, these bodies are all just vessels for beings like us to be born into. There's something similar to Sabe in the seas, different looking of course, but also a bit human-like. Every form has its, has its exact purpose. Then there's something that might freak out a lot of people. Sabe is not by far the most dangerous of these forms. Through deep mines, we sometimes cross into a ring where half etheric beings exist. They can manifest physically for a short time and even harm us while normally remaining invisible. To those, similar laws apply. They'll most likely not warn us, but scare us off. And if that doesn't help, or if we carry hostile thoughts within us, they might really hurt us. Those half etheric, might be etheric, E-T-H-E-R-I-C, forms can look like things you saw on TV, shapes of monsters. I know all about that. I know how that sounds, but it's the truth. Many freaky things that people saw that looked way worse than Sabe can be of that kind. They sometimes can be seen on the surface for short amounts of time. I can fill hundreds of pages more of this. Where do I know this from? There are and have always been a very, a few very old people who live their lives here, die, get born again, and so on, but not for hundreds of years, but for way more than thousands. And a few of them remember the entire history, everything. To give you a clue about what I mean, the asteroid belt in our solar system was a planet that burst into four huge pieces about 6,000 years ago. The people from that world were about double our height and some even larger. Right after, some of their bodies were drawn into the gravity field of Earth, Mars, and other planets, where their frozen bodies rained down. At that time, quite a few fell down in old Egypt. Their dead bodies were worshipped and buried. Those are some of those those are some of those giant skeletons that our bad leaders tried to hide. Many huge skeletons have other origins. They looked like strong humans with woven long beards. The world was almost as large as Saturn. And no, the gravity didn't crush them, because there's more of those forces than people currently understand. It was like a green pearl. For all the oceans we have, they had endless green forests. I remember their culture, what they wore, how they lived. Many of these souls first took human form again in old Japan. That's, by the way, where Japan has many of its housing designs and some of the soldier clothing from. Many of those people born in Japan back then remembered their former lives in the old world and were inspired strongly by that. So this was a huge influence on that country and region. Of course, these are only fragments of what had happened. There's way more to it. This is just recent history. There's so much more. I'm just annoyed about how people today are being kept from really everything essential. Just a fragment of that old knowledge could give many people's life a deeper meaning and inspiration of how big life really is. Oh, another thing. You asked why some people who know things still don't tell or why they seem bound by something. Remember these etheric watchers to use some sort of name for them, they also prevent certain individuals from revealing things that would influence or our development. You might ask, what business is it of theirs to decide that? We need to differentiate here. Some people are witnessing things through example Sabe or even the watchers of Sabe. When this is the source of that knowledge and the person spills all that knowledge, all the consequences will fall back on the source and they very much try to avoid that. There's not just physical consequences here. The more severe consequences are non-physical, 
just because we don't pay attention to that doesn't change what's happening. If you dozens of people who remember basically everything, every time we were born here, there's no link. So it's our decision what to say and to whom. And that's why I can tell you all this. The only consequences for me might be from the arrogant elites, but the truth is worth it. If you want to read more, feel free to continue. I'll try to answer more questions. All right, let's get into her. Abductions. You're wondering what those flying discs, discs have to do with Sabe. It's not so mysterious as many might think. You know, a, a bad rogue Sabe who live on the far edge of what they are allowed to do, including leading people into traps. Some of those rogues, just like most Sabe, can easily communicate with, example, the Greys. Just one of the star neighbors around here. Some rogues have sort of a bad deal going on with some of the greys, example, to scout out certain people with active abilities in their genes, which some of the greys are interested in. So, when a rogue isn't allowed to touch you because you didn't cross a line, he might immediately tap off those greys to also do some borderline stuff just to get rid of you or punish you, like it was the case with that scientist you read about. So, you might ask, how are the greys allowed to somewhat violate our rights? And here's the answer. You notice the tech boom and new developments in the last 80 years? <laughs> if anybody had a half a brain, you're damn straight. You thought like people in the 50s, that is normal. And people just made a huge technological leap. Actually, our disgusting leaders traded for much of that technology, and, and in return, they officially gave these greys, and meanwhile, even other visitors, the right to experiment on humans as they please. You see, it all goes by laws. The Greys and other borderline bad ones would have been stopped by other forces that are always around us, if they hadn't gotten permission to do so. So, you see, the fact that people of this world elect leaders who lie to them and betray their, betray their own for money, power, and other benefits, that all started this whole mess. And we agreed to it by proxy. If you elect devils as your leaders, guess what happens? It's not mysterious and it's not magical, it's quite human. The last decades, our disgusting leaders are extremely focused on getting technology to prolong human life. No, not for you or me, not for us. That's for them. That's for those elites, as they enjoy being called. And since our scientists are something like 2,000 years away from understanding that technology, they, of course, make deals again. And guess who has to pay for that? By the way, some good savvy families have a decent deal with some greys, which help to protect their families. So with that... You'll be able to explain a lot more. It's not all the same. Genetic manipulation. Our scientists are at the level where they can spawn Frankenstein's monster, grow some replacement tissue, or experiment with food that causes cancer when you eat it. That's where our scientists are. But all the really good stuff, that's all being traded for. So, we humans are not as advanced as we like to believe. The elites don't communicate with radio technology. They have something far better. They have their own flying discs and hybrid planes they are testing since decades to use a stupid name and they can hide it in plain sight. They have all the technology humans ever dreamed of and more. They will never share it with you slash us. They traded the technology to use space tunnels, what sci-fi calls subspace. I know Hollywood uses that term, but it actually fits really well. I can explain even how that works. In short, the matter you see, the atoms are not actually absolute particles. They are a manifestation of a subatomic frequency pattern. I'm not just talking about a vibration, but more complex. That means you shift that pattern, the atoms will cease to exist. All matter has a source in subspace, like a closed flower bud. The manif manifestation pattern is what lets atoms appear in a specific realm. If you see Sabe flying through the air, half disappearing, that's him changing that manifestation pattern to a higher one. He's shifting. So all you see is actually on an object in subspace. If you see it with atoms visible to your eyes or manifesting in a higher form, invisible to us, that's all this vibration pattern at the source. That's how objects, discs, even people or Sabe can travel huge distances in seconds and why it's a bit dangerous if you were to get stuck without understanding what's happening. The Gray's teleporters shift this pattern of matter in subspace, of matter in subspace, 
So all manifestation ceases. There's no atoms anymore. They then use the exact same subatomic frequency that object, uh, that object has to attract it from point A to point B, because in subspace, you can move objects by attracting them like this. When the object arrived at point B, they will use a frequency to get the object to manifest the original subatomic vibration pattern, which will manifest the same atoms as it had before. So, it's not like sci-fi believed that you destroy an object and recreate it somewhere else. It's more like closing a flower to a bud, attracting it in a super in a subatomic space layer and encouraging it to bloom again at the destination, showing all its colors and beauty. Back to the elites. The elites consider the people of this world to be livestock. I would absolutely agree with that one. A dumb labor force at best. Right now they started their programs to reduce the population significantly and more bad programs will follow this one. You know, it does bring tears to my eyes living with that knowledge and not being able to help or wake people up. But we all decide what we really want to know. There's a price to be paid just to live with it. The last person I told some of it told me they can't live with it and it's too much, it's too heavy to carry that burden. We all decide for ourselves how much truth knocks at our door. But as you said, each of us should at least be able to decide to get answers if they seek them. I admire your willingness and courage to go all the way for the actual truth. And for that, I offer you all I know, which might take a couple of books to write. It might be faster to not waste months or years if you had specific questions about any topic at all. If you're interested, I can tell you a lot more. But in the end, if you knew it all right now, you might not feel like talking anymore. Not because you don't want to help, but because you would be torn between tears and feeling crushed by the sheer weight of it. I was struggling to decide for a year now if I should write to you or not. So here is a start. I'm offering this to you. You decide, my friend. Thank you a lot for what you're doing. Cheers, Gunter. All right. What do you say to that? It's going to be a lot of people are probably going to say, lose the crack pipe, Gunter. Right? It just goes with the turf. Uh, one part that stands out for me in the early in the beginning was when you said those large beings came from an exploded planet and fell to the earth. Their skeletal remains. But just that one, that one little one right there for me would, in a way, not trying to be rude, but in a way that's almost a red flag to me. I mean, how how could anybody be expected to believe that a body, frozen, even frozen, even in a even in a 100 foot square block of ice, how would that re-enter the atmosphere, rip down to the planet with all that friction, blazing hot, and not melt before impact, if it did impact anyway, especially on hard ground, how would it not absolutely shatter? <laughs> you know what I mean? So just that one little point you made for me is pretty tough pill for me to swallow right there. And the rest of it, I haven't a clue because I don't know, because I don't know anybody who has made the statements that you have made with such confidence, right? I mean, how would you back that up? How would you back it up? And it's kind of funny, you know, when you when I've heard that in numerous times, I've heard people say that the savvy have the rules, they can't break the rules, and if they harm anybody, then they're gonna pay for it. Okay, well, what the hell then? Like the other day I rumbled by accident. I came across, now I've come across three different videos as an example. To that. So far I've come across three different videos on Rumble where I was like one of the first 20 people to watch absolutely by accident. I wish I didn't. One was these Ukrainian guys have these Russian young enlisted forces guys bound on the ground and they're shooting them right in the frickin parts. Full HD Sony Handycam clarity like you're standing right there. And they had just another three or four young guys pulling them out of a vehicle and stood them up right here and they're watching these guys rig wriggling around, living their absolute worst nightmare, and then a guy swung his barrel over and shot the other guys straight in the marbles as well. Another guy was bleeding out. It was pretty disgusting, I wish I'd ever seen it. And then as an example, I was on Rumble again, scrolling through, and by accident found another similar video, by absolute accident, I wasn't Google, I wasn't searching it. 
and uh, it'd been up. I think it's the 21st viewer. It's gone. These videos, that video, the one I'm about to mention, gone now. And have again, there's these uh, Ukrainian Nazi guys. And they had a handful of these young guys on the ground, five or six, six of them, and they're all bleeding out. And you could hear them laboring breath with bubbles of blood in their lungs and their throats, just like you would when you walk up on a deer or elk. And the blood in the pavement was incredible. And the guy kept on slamming a few rounds of lead into them. So what I'm getting at, you guys, is I'm sorry I had to paint that picture. Unfortunately, I saw that. I wish I didn't. But the Sabe are instructed not to cross the line or they will be stopped or dealt with instantly. Well, what the F are these guys doing? What are humans, why are humans allowed to go around doing this shit to each other? Now, I understand if you put on that uniform and pick up a gun, you're probably going to die by the gun. I get it. But there's also people being intentionally violated in every way imaginable. Why aren't those humans stopped? From this higher power, you know what I mean? So... That's what I instantly think when I hear people saying that they have to go by rules. I go, wait a minute, so here's this hairy giant in the forest and other places that the majority of the human population won't acknowledge. And they got rules, and they're allowed to hurt human beings. But meanwhile, human beings are allowed to basically do every single absolute most disgusting, heinous thing you can come up with. People are doing it to adults and infants alike without any consequences at all. And they continue to do it, and I don't understand that part, so that's what I'm getting at. Somebody says, the Sabe have rules, they can't do this or that, and if they do, they pay for it instantly. But well, what the fuck's going on with human beings? Right. But anyway, Gutter, I am all yours, man. If you want to share more, if you want to share more with me, I'm all yours. I need to hear from everybody, and I'll decide what I'm going to take for it, take from it, or leave it. For me, I'll decide. It's my puzzle I'm trying to put together. But I welcome you to share absolutely whatever you got with me. I'm not scared of shit. Bring it. I've had my close brushes with death, and I'm good with it. And I think for a lot of people who might understand my stance on it, it's like this, man. It's like, okay, we're born. We've got this one life to live. This is a beautiful place. We've been given the emotions of happiness and excitement and adrenaline. And... Uh, being passionate about life and the colors and the nature and all the good things that go with it. But meanwhile, we've got these dirty, filthy sons of bitches dragging us down nonstop, taking more than half of our earnings, incarcerating innocent people, killing innocent people for power. And I just would find it, I would be absolutely upset if I could not come to the truth of who we are, what we're supposed to be able to do, what we can do. And... I would be upset if I went through this lifetime not being able to do something to turn this shit show around. If I die without the answers, I'm going to be pissed off. <laughs> Even, you know, I'm not pissed off. I, as you guys see, a lot of people think I'm this angry guy running around, but you might want to take note too. I'm running around enjoying my passions as much as I can the same time I'm digging for answers. So while I'm running around in all these beautiful places I share with you guys, I'm smiling and I'm like a freaking three-year-old kid playing in the mud puddle up back with his favorite toys. I'm having a hoot as much as I can. Probably more so than your average person. Okay? I I combo up what I'm passionate about with making a living, paying the bills, and I live it to the max. So, I'm saying that so you guys don't think I'm this angry character running around pissed off and angry all the time. <laughs> I'm not. How could I be? But, I I am more eager and willing to get in the face of anybody who's on the dark side and especially if they want to attack me personally if they want to seek me out and try to disrupt life for me or anyone to care about yeah i can flip that switch and i can be that ruthless mf -er, for sure but i don't carry myself with that all the time so anyways i'm rambling gunter i want to hear it all you got more i want to hear it you may have dropped a little bit of a hint that it may be too much to bear I'm ready. I've buried a lot more than I've ever shared, that's for sure. And I'm good. I'm ready to go. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Everybody bring it. Drop it on me. Whatever you got, give it to me. All right? Give it to me. All of it. Anything. You send it to me, and I'll decide. I'll decide. Anyway. Well. Man, it's shitty out.
They call for 10 or 20 centimeters of snow. I'm gonna get snowed. I'm gonna get weathered out. Weathered out of my freaking plans. Well, I've got most of what I had wanted to get done done, but I'm gonna get weathered out here because I wanted to take my friend's young son, who I think is absolutely amazing, and I want to stick him in front of the camera and take me out shed hunting for elk and deer antlers out in the back 40 and uh, tell me about his outdoor adventures. And he's got a shit pile, and he's only this big. And that was one of my big goals, too. Let me get a hold of them right now and see what they're doing. See how we might pull this off. This weather sucks. <laughs> I'll keep making these shares as long as I'm weathered in. Let's keep this ball rolling while I'm getting weathered into the cabin. <laughs> Life's not fair sometimes, I'll tell you what. All right. What do we got? This is titled, I Think They Can Choose Who Sees Them. And I agree without a doubt. Except for the odd one that gets suckered by accident over river bank edge. Hi uh, Steve, sorry if I spelled that wrong. <laughs> My name, you nailed it. <laughs> I hope you're in good health and are doing well with yourself. My uncle is a huge follower of the channel and introduced it to me not long ago. Since then I've been fascinated and overjoyed to hear all the experiences of the people which have their voices heard by your good self. I have a story to share. And if you do choose to share this, I'd prefer to be referred to as simply C. You got it, and I haven't I don't know what about I'm on about I don't know what I'm about to read. Sorry for saying that. So it's funny when people say, if you're going to share this, I'm like, hey man, I share it. We, we are learning at the same time, everybody. Before I speak about my experience, which isn't strictly Bigfoot related, but paranormal at the same time, I thought I'd give you a background of myself. I'm 25 years old and I live in the UK in a town called Watford, just outside of London. In the time I've spent on this earth, I've always wanted to believe that there is something more out there and often wish the existence of the creatures you focus on, as well as other cryptids and strange beings, is real. Whilst I have spent time hoping, I have never known whether or not to truly believe in such things. That was until a few weeks ago, when I had the second of the two paranormal experiences that I have been lucky enough to witness. The first was interesting, but this one got me thinking a lot more. As a bit of an extra information, I work as a teleprompt operator. Someone who uses equipment and software to show a script for people to read off of. No shit. You're the one that stands in front of dummies like Biden and holds, holds, up, the, uh, <laughs> holds up the text to read. My job has many perks, but none are more thrilling than the opportunities I have to go and work in grand old venues for award ceremonies. No doubt. I'll try to be as succinct as possible, but this frightened the life out of me. A few weeks back, I was working at a small awards ceremony at the building named the Merchant Taylor's Hall. It's a small and extremely grand wall building in the middle of the city of London, nestled in the shadows of the skyscrapers which loom over it. This is a hall that I believe was used as perhaps an off-site campus or a meeting venue for those of the Merchant Taylor's School, which, funnily enough, is a private school located just 15 minutes from my house. It's an extremely well-kept building, and it might even be listed, meaning it cannot be destroyed or damaged, etc. It was so old and well-kept, in fact, that I was not even allowed to use gaffer tape on certain floor surfaces to take my wires down, at risk of peeling the varnish, etc. Wow. It's amazing it survived the war, too, right? During my downtime before the award ceremony began, I thought I would make use of the toilet facilities to get changed from my rigging gear into my smarter clothing. The entrance to the restrooms is at the bottom of a small flight of stairs which led down from the hallway. To paint the picture of the scene, the layout was as follows. A set of double doors, which opened both ways, sat at the bottom of the stairs. Upon entering the doors, you are met with a long corridor, well lit, and around 15 meters long. Everything which one could need was on the left-hand side, whilst on the right was a wall running the length of the corridor. The facilities on the left are separated by two walls acting as partitions. Immediately to my left were the sinks and mirrors. A few meters down, there was a wall which separated that section from the next, which were the urinals. And then a few meters further down, there's another wall which separated the urinals from the cubicles. I entered a cubicle and got changed into my smart clothes before making my way out of the cubicle and back to the, up to the corridor. The other facilities were now on my right. As I made my way up to the sinks to wash my hands, something caught my eyes as I passed the urinal section. A figure, which appeared to be a man, wearing a dark blue suit jacket, stood beside one of the urinals. 
he did not appear to be using it, which made me think that he was either getting ready to use it or had already finished and was zipping his trousers, etc. The hallway was relatively long and it could have been very easy for someone to enter the restrooms without me hearing whilst I was in a cubicle. I carried on to the sinks and didn't think much of it. I washed and dried my hands, which all in took around 10 seconds before walking to the double doors. I decided to hold the doors open and then look behind me in case my theory of the man having just finished was true, as it would have been rude for me to have not offered. After a few seconds, he didn't appear, so I figured that he may have in fact just got there. I let it slide and left before heading up the stairs. But then something made me feel uneasy and nervous. I'm not particularly super superstitious, but when your gut tells you something's up, it's never wrong. But back to two theories that I had. No, I'm no urine expert or anything, but I'm pretty sure that even if the man had just started to use the urine all I walked past, he wouldn't have been there for almost half a minute before washing his hands. I stood at the top of the stairs, texted my girlfriend to check up on her whilst admiring artwork on the walls. Three or four minutes had passed, and the man hadn't left the restrooms. Seeing as there was only one way in and out of the restrooms, I figured that he had either had an accident of some description, or maybe something I couldn't explain or fathom. I felt uneasy, but I went back into the bathroom to check. Nothing. I checked all the cubicles, and there was nobody there. I decided that it was time to get the hell out of the toilets. Fast forward a couple hours, and I'm sat behind a stage, running the teleprompt for the host of the awards. Dinner is called. I leap from behind the stage and make my way to the room where the crew were eating to get my dinner. This meant that I had to walk through the hall where the guests were sat. It was a small awards ceremony with eight tables and just five people on each one. I scoured the hall slowly as I walked past. Any men who were there were dressed in black tie only. No blue jackets, nothing of the sort. This is a truly freaky ordeal which was made even scarier when I researched the Merchant Taylor School uniform. It's a navy blue. Now I have tried to debunk it, but have no answers. I have gladly and respectfully accepted that this is something I just cannot explain which leads me on to the question, why? Why had I seen it, but nobody else had? I'm pretty sure that most people would tell at least someone if they had seen something like that. I certainly did, and got laughed at. It makes me think that maybe paranormal entities such as spirits, or indeed Bigfoot, can choose who can see them. Maybe as intimidation, say if someone is dwelling too close to their nest in the forest, or maybe even a playful nature. Either way, I know that this is not strictly Bigfoot related, but it's just food for thought. Keep well, be safe, keep doing what you're doing best, C. Okay, C. Okay, guys, listen, first off, don't start flooding me with ghost stories, all right? There's a gazillion channels out there. Um, you know what this channel's about. And C, I'm not giving you shit for sending us in, for sending that in to us either, all right? I mean, I didn't, I didn't have a clue what you're, gonna, what you're writing into us about, but... Uh, there is a pile of shit going on that we don't understand. And the ghost thing, I had one one direct experience with a ghost 110% 10 or 12 years ago. Well, maybe 15 years ago. It scared the shit out of me. Just hit, a, hit under the covers and wanted to go away and went away and I'm done with it. I, got, I don't want nothing to do with it. Coincidentally, about uh, maybe a month ago, Sarah swore. She saw an elderly man in work-type clothes standing beside my shop door in broad daylight, looking at where I'd set up a temporary table to stain all the, the wood. And she saw him standing there. And then he was gone. Why don't I mention it here? This is what it is, man. I mean, it's, uh, you know, Sarah and and some people related to her have had a bit of a history of seeing seeing some some things that not aren't too common but commonly reported from other people that see the same things. I'm just not into it. I don't need a ghost in my life. I don't need it. Do I have a burning desire to find out about ghosts more? Hmm. Not really. I have a feeling all those answers will come in the end to us. It is interesting, isn't it? I've talked to... I know a lot of people who have seen ghosts and people who I wouldn't question for one second. It scares the shit out of them. But I think it's that type of scared where it just scares us because it's not supposed to be real and we don't know what to do or think about, right? And that's fine. Anyway, thanks for sending that in again. That must be an amusing job. I'd find it amusing for me 
being a teleprompter just because I have zero respect for celebrity status of any kind. <laughs> this is what it is. I don't hate celebrities. I've had a lot of brushes with them. It's just not my gig. It's not my gig. We are all, as far as I'm concerned, we're all equal no matter who we are. It's funny, maybe one time I'll share some video with guys. A few years ago, I was actually, uh, I did some work on Gene Simmons' house. A friend of mine built his house. One of his houses actually built it for Shannon Tweed in Whistler, British Columbia. Shannon bought us all a ticket, well, a handful of us. She bought us tickets to go to the kickoff tour, kiss off tour, was it called? And I uh, had some good conversation, conversations with Shannon. Got kind of drunk. There's a room down below where all the people go with their families before they perform or play sports. And then I walked out. Shannon was in front of me, right in front of me. We all walked out. And it was such a bizarre thing to get that taste of their flavor of life. Because we walked out and there was a, a platform. This is in Vancouver, British Columbia. There's a platform in the middle of the whole stadium. Right on the floor, dead center. And I'm right behind Shannon. The second the the second we walked out into view, this the spotlights, boom, are on us. And the crowd starts freaking the hell out because of Shannon Tweed, right? I remember walking out there and it was really weird. It's just really weird to feel the energy of that place. And all of them screaming for Shannon. And she's just a normal chick. I mean, she is a she's done some reality TV show, but I had some I had some good conversations about it. She's a, she's a true good person, for sure. Did I talk to her like she was a celebrity or somebody special? <laughs> Not a chance. I talked to her like I went to school with her, like everybody else. And then, uh, yeah, the concert went on. It's kind of funny. People started texting me. Is that you down there? <laughs> like, where are you at? I saw some friends I hadn't seen for years, and I actually busted out of there and went up and gave them a hug. But it was something, anyways, getting back to it, the celebrity thing, yeah, I'm, it's not my gig, man. It's just more amazing, like I said, for me to watch people. I get more amazed watching human beings and seeing how they ride through life and how they react, how they treat each other, how they react to different scenarios. That yeah, was weird. Yeah, I met Gene and the whole gang afterwards. Whatever, blah, blah. But anyway, that's actually my first time I ever took a selfie it was with Shannon at that, on that platform. As I said, you know what, I've never, had, I've never, I'm not into selfie shit. I said, I've never taken a selfie before in my life. What do you think, should we do it? She says, yeah, let's do it. And that was my first time I ever took a selfie is with Shannon Tweed at the, at the Kiss concert. But anyway, I imagine you see a lot of characters doing being the tele, teleprompter. <laughs> ghosts, no thanks. The one thing about ghosts is they don't follow people around in the forest and throw rocks and sticks at them and absolutely ruin it for my fellow outdoors person's passion. So that's probably another reason why I don't really give it any attention because if ghosts did do that, I would be after their asses and trying to find out the answers so I could help all my friends and we could enjoy life and our passions to the max and try to figure out why the F these ghosts are in the forest banging on trees and chasing us and throwing rocks and shit, right? But they're not, so I don't really give a shit. How's that for a babble? <laughs> babble, babble. All right, here we go. I'm gonna get a hold of these guys and see what the gang is doing. I'll be back later.